Hello. Hello there. Is that uh, Glenn Goldsmith? Hello. Yes, it is. Hi, Glenn. <laughs> Don't delay. He's amazing. What oh, a brilliant. tune. Ah. Oh. You know, when it when it was sort of it came in and uh, Anna put it into the rotation, and the first time I played it on air, I hadn't actually pre listened, um, and it came on, and I just thought, wow! And so did loads of our oh. listeners as well. You know, it was just oh. well, wonderful. They're going mental, are they? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, they do come back on Twitter, on on various social media, even by text, and just say, you know, what what a track, you know? Oh wow, that's brilliant. No, that's brilliant. That track's been sitting around for a while, and I've been, I've been sort of, uh, you know, tender hooks trying to get it out. I think, I think to myself, you know, is, is it the right track to go with now? Do you know what I mean? Because I've got another track that's coming out pretty soon as well, well um, called, called London Skies. I'll get that to you guys pretty soon. Oh, I can't wait to hear that one. I mean, this morning I played uh, So At Ease, and um, oh, yeah. again, you know, went down really, really well. Absolutely wow. brilliant, you know, on wow. the breakfast show. Just, just loving it, you know. I mean, the sound is just amazing. It, it's new and fresh, but it's just got that, you know. That, that it was like you were talking about in your Facebook post this morning. Yeah. Um, you know, yes, you do come from the eighties. Yes, your music has that kind of basis to it, but it's new yeah. and it's fresh and it's lovely. Yeah. Well, I had a bit of a debate with someone on the, <laughs> online, <laughs> and he was saying, "Oh, you know, I wouldn't have bought this in the eighties. I wouldn't have bought this in the nineties. In fact, I don't like it." And I thought, "Oh, you, you know what? You're not getting it." No, but I know a lot of people get it, you know. So mm. I had to sort of put it up there to make sure people understand that, yeah, you know, it's from the eighties, but it's not. It's sort of like a blend of everything else that I've been listening to. Well, so. And it yeah. works as such, but it's, yeah. it's just, you know, you, you describe yourself as a, as a UK soul artist, absolutely right. You know, the, yeah. the, the feel is there and it's good, but it's got, it's got that Glenn Goldsmith-ness about it as well, which I think is... Um, That's it. You know, That's it. Also uh, a, a fantastic thing. You hit the nail thing. on the head there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah very much so. Very much so. Where yeah. are you guys based? Where are you guys based? Well, we're only in South London. You can kind of see the Crystal Palace Tower from here. You know. It's, oh right, um, okay. Yeah, we're not not. To, uh, where about to you? You're Central London, are you? There? Yeah, I'm kind of like a uh, Hampstead, uh, bell sized Park, sort of that sort of end. Mm, yeah, yeah. So um, yeah. yeah, not a million miles away. That's that's great. <laughs> Well, do you mind if I start sort of throwing a few sort of questions at you? Because yeah. uh, you know, a few, few things from back in the day and and stuff like that. Um, yeah, why not? I don't know how much time you've got. I've got as long as oh, you've I've got, got plenty time. I've so, got plenty time. Wonderful. Well, I just wanted to ask you about sort of how it all started with you and music. I mean, what what got you into music from a young age? I guess. Yeah. What, what was it? Well, funny enough. Um, you know, when we were young, you know, back in the day, you know, we used to go all to the clubs and everything and, you know, listen to really good soul music. And uh, funny enough, I used to just stand there and uh, mime over records sometime, like a, <laughs> <laughs> make myself really embarrassed. But I used to draw a crowd and I thought, well, I'm kind of liking this. And uh, I've met, I met a manager called Lowell um, in my local area where I grew up from. And he managed a band called Push, mm -hmm. a jazz funk band. So um, he took me on the road, basically, and uh, the band split up, and he said, look, I'm going to make you into a star. You're the one, you know, out of all the band, you're the one I'm going to focus on. Um, you know, just get your head, head together, and uh, I can tell you you're driven, and uh, get some material together, and we try and get a deal. So yeah. loads of little things happened in between, and I met, I met um, he introduced me to Imagination's manager, who started managing me as well. Yes. It was kind of a co-management. But in the end, you know, um, it was so hard at the time being a solo, Act, but I did manage to get a lot of meetings myself with major labels, and walked in with uh, with all my demos, and they heard a couple of stuff, and they said, you know, CBS at the time, who's now Sony, uh, really loved it, was going to sign me initially about 17, 18. Um, I ended up going with an independent because I didn't want to be that commercial. They were very commercial. Mm, yeah. So, um, and a lot of the songs they picked were the ones I didn't really love you know i like them but i didn't love them yes um and i thought thought if i took that now i'm going to go down head down a road where i wouldn't have any control over what you know what i'd be doing so musically so i decided that it has to be a soul label so i went with a, a small label called elite records mm. who had a lot of stuff coming out at the time i mean their biggest thing at the time was level 42's early stuff and yeah. uh, level 42 then got signed to polydor and then went all commercial you know that's which right the thing, yeah. the mm. thing back then you know um, as soon as you go with a major, they turn you into commercial artists. Well, so, it, it um, happens quite a few, didn't it? That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. 
So um, I was kind of scared of that. I really wanted to get the ground, um, the foundation from the ground upwards, really. And people that really understood my music were really kind of the young street kids at the time, you know, like ourselves back then. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so uh, I, um, I did stay with the, with the company for long, but it was kind of a, an apprenticeship, really. I met um, the guy that did the production for me on uh, So At Ease and Sunshine and uh, Jamming in the Place. It's a guy called Toby Baker. Mm. Um, and he was uh, in, a, in a band at the time, signed to Italy Records. And we, we did loads of demos, loads of uh, soul, soul songs. And uh, what happened was, um, in the end, RCA signed me up, but refused to sort of work with him uh, oh. for some unknown reason. It was all political and everything. But they wanted to introduce me to producers that they had. So I kind of went with their producer, who was keeping it kind of commercial, but at the same time, still tapping into areas that I love. So yeah. Dreaming came about, I Won't Cry came about with these producers, Jolly Harris Jolly. And, um, you know, history history was made kind of thing. <laughs> well, what a, what a success they were. I mean, 1987, I Won't Cry, that was number 34 in the UK charts. And then yeah, Dreaming... That stayed around. Yeah. yeah, that stayed around for ages. We thought it was going to go... It stayed around for nearly six months um, because the record company really wasn't pushing it, but it was mm. just getting... You know, it was up and down, up and down, up and down. It, you know, if it, if it came out today, it would be definitely a number one. Yeah, you know, I, I remember. I yeah. remember it hovering in the charts there, like you yeah. say, for about six months. I mean, yeah. I was DJing myself it. back then. Yeah, they too. had to pull it so they yeah. could get Dreaming out. I was mm. gutted, really, because it was going to climb up. But they had to pull it because it, was, it had a long, long lifespan. So they pulled it, and then we went with Dreaming. We went with uh, So At Ease and... No, not So At Ease, um... What is he? What you get? Which is a popular what you single. Get. Yeah, and yeah. then we went with um, Save a Little Bit, and uh, then the album. You know. Yeah, so, I mean, uh, Dreaming hit twelve. I mean, that, I remember that was that was the one you 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 presented um, on top of the pops on on more than one occasion, yeah. didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, that was a bit of a <laughs> bit of a spin. That one, you know, yeah. nearly never got on there. If I'm honest with you, because uh, all the paperwork wasn't put together. You know, we had uh, musicians' union back then, so the union would like uh, get upset if you didn't have all your paperwork all together. Mm, yes. We were laxing with all that stuff. So it was like an hour before we went on, we had to rush down to a musician's union, fill up the papers, and then we then we were thrown on TV. So it was all <laughs> like last minute, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. yeah. I, I remember, I, I actually did go on Top of the Pops back in the day, to be fair. I, I, I actually yeah. was there in the audience, not, not on the occasion that you were there, but... Uh, yeah, it's a very strange environment. Was top of the pops when you're actually yeah. there live. It was uh, quite unusual, you know, and um, you know, being sort of uh, made to dance and uh, asked to remove oh. yourself if you didn't, and things oh, like that. I felt sorry for the crowd, honestly. <laughs> There's not much in the crowd. It looks really busy when you're watching the TV, but it's not very much. It's probably about I don't know about thirty people dancing away, and That's right. uh, you know, those, those cameras are very heavy as well. Mm. And uh, the girls were getting in the way, sort of screaming, losing them, losing their minds, you know. <laughs> and um, uh, one of the cameramen rolled over one of the girls' feet, and I thought, oh no, I could see it as well. So I had to concentrate and not look down. I could sort of see it through the side of my eye that yeah. this girl was screaming in agony. Oh. And uh, they sort of pushed her out the way, out the way, you're in the way, you know. It was really <laughs> funny, you know. <laughs> All for the good of television, of course. <laughs> <laughs> that's how it goes you know that's how they did it back in the day you know I don't know how, I think it's all technical now isn't it you know they don't have the cameraman out there anymore it's almost like the studio in the background and uh, everything's kind of like digital so if they did anything now which is if Top of the Pops came back which, which I think they should do you know mm. bring back Top of the Pops or something like that just to sort of uh, you know uh, pin down what's really happening in the music business because it's quite confusing at the moment I mean mm. I don't know what you think but I think it's quite confusing I, I think so it's, much stuff yeah. going on, you know, charts popping up here and there and uh, hard to follow, you know, some great music, there's some great music, but it's like pinning it down. And I think Top of the Pops pinned it down, you know, what's yeah. the best of the best, you know. Well, I think, you know, there's, there's such a discrepancy between what's played on what are called the, the big, in inverted commas, radio stations and... Um, us sort of smaller independent stations. I mean, we cover a lot for independent artists and uh, yeah. pull out some real talent, you know, some real raw talent, some talent from uh, sort of years gone by where where yeah. people are still putting in wonderful tunes. But 
I don't know. It just seems to be the same old names in 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 the main charts. It's like yeah, it's quite um quite boring, really. I mean, I'm. I'm sort of sad about that but then again you know when you think about it the whole industry who um and i'm not knocking them but you know we've got certain a and r men and uh, certain businessmen that saw it as a as a vehicle really um to make money really mm. rather than looking into the music side of it so i remember when cds came out i was gutted i'm not going to lie i was really gutted because i love vinyl mm, me too and uh they avoided the vinyl and went with the cds more and then they there was a another format that were, they were going to put out, which was um, that, mm. that failed. And so we that tends to be used in the recording studios rather than become commercial. And it just went on and on and on till kind of like you lost your way a little bit. Now it's all digital. And I'm not going to lie to you. It took me, it took me <laughs> at least five years. I was very stubborn, you know, mm. to get my head around this digital thing. I was like, I'm not going to go with it. I'm not going with it because... Oh, I refuse. I want vinyl. You know, I'm old school. So mm. <laughs> I've still got a record player, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I've got two Technics 12 tins sitting right next to me here in the studio. So I know what you mean. I know what you mean. You know what I mean? Uh, so I, it's all sort of changed now. And uh, I've kind of like now accepted it and uh, making the most of it and using it as a proper vehicle. And what's happening is um, all the major record companies have kind of suffered, really. So they've become sh- they've shrunk down mm. in size and uh, less important, really, to real creative people who want to just do it for the love of music rather than sort of be a massive pop star out there and mm. you get totally exploited and everything and uh you know not saying that it's not a bad thing you know you, there's money there but at the same time it's a career that you're looking for longevity and you want to do it right absolutely and it's really based on music you know we're all going to get old and you want your music to last a long time you know and so i can't see a lot of these pop artists at the moment having that longevity you might remember the records but there's so much of it that you're thinking oh I can't, can't it goes over your head really you know well i often I wonder, can't tell you what was in the chart last year no <laughs> no i often wonder if you took away all of the um, you know the stations the, the big radio stations and we know the ones that we're talking about that back these people you took away all of the money that they put into their pr and just put their record out like a lot of the independent artists have to do you just wonder how they would fare you know yeah <laughs> yeah um, i mean they, they sort of all sort of like uh eat each other's breakfast if you know what i mean they're sort of living together mm. and it's very hard to sort of um i mean i've managed to get a couple of radio on plays you know and um just, you know they've got the the A list, the A the A list, the B list, and the C list, mm-hmm. and you have to have a plugger really to get in there and push. And it's like a little committee around the table, and it's really hard to sort of get in there. And it's based on really what they think is, uh, you know, happening at the time. Yeah. But really, the independents, um, the independent stations, and uh, who are now becoming a little more, they, they actually got a lot more power. I think mm. they hold the ground. And it's really never changed. Really, it's kind of really the same format. You know, when we put records out, we did white labels to test the market, put it out there, see if the DJs love it in the clubs and on radio, independent radio. And um, from there, you know, you can kind of tell if something's going to happen with the record. Mm. Um, And the major radio stations would then jump on it and the major labels would think, okay, we need to throw a lot of money behind this if the DJs got behind it. But... um, I think once it got commercial, once it crossed over into the commercial side, it, you know, everybody let go of it. It was kind of mm. like three weeks span career. You know, that was it. You, you had a three week burst. Everything was thrown at it, and then it kind of died out. But yeah. um, with the independence now, you know, records tend to last a bit longer. I'm kind of, you know, again, I'm fighting, still fighting a little bit with the webs and everything like that. So when people say to me, "Are you going to come with an album?" Um, I'm I'm coming with an album, but <laughs> mm. what I decided to do was uh, each record was to really spend time on really getting the most out of that record and you know almost finishing my dinner if you know what I mean rather than sort of quickly throwing it throwing it down and yes. uh, yeah. not getting the most out of it and going with the next record the next record and then an album. I find that when I go online, um, I've got a favourite artist or whatever. I go online on iTunes or whatever, and um, I listen to the whole album which we didn't do back in the day. We just liked the artist and then we went back and we bought the whole album, you know. Yes. But now we, you've got the chance to listen to a whole album. And I'll pick one, one track or two tracks. That means that whole project has been sort of wasted, you mm. know, financially and also creatively for that artist because they're not getting their fans to buy the whole album, really. And I think 50% of that goes on, really. Um, mm. So I've decided to go with singles right now 
get the most out of the singles. You know, rinse them if I know if you know what I mean. Well, and you know, um, we're yeah. getting kind of eight months, six months, eight months span out of them. You know, they're going in and out, back in and out with sulky UK charts, and you know, people play around with them still for like at least eight months. I give it that that kind of yeah, you know, longevity. Yeah. So we get the at least a good amount of time out of it. Fabulous. Because uh, and then you're in control, really. You know, then you're you're sort of in control. You don't let you're not following the same old format that everyone does. Plus no. videos as well. You know. Um, I haven't done a video yet, yet for any of those tunes <laughs> since 2011, since Jamming came out. Yeah, um, yeah. I haven't done any video, and then everyone's asking me, well, what's happening with videos? Why don't you do a video? Well, it's the same old thing, isn't it? People look at it for five seconds, and then, oh, yeah, I like the record, I don't like the record. And then, you know, I think I think just keep it really simple. It's, it's really about, it's, it's a bit like going to the, yeah. to the shops in the old days. You never saw the artists. You never knew what they looked like. Mm until you went to the shop and you bought the sleeve, you know. That's right. And so uh, it was all about the music. That's right, absolutely. No confusion, you know. Well, I mean, so, uh, it has to be sustainable as well. I mean, the cost of, of producing a video is, is astronomical, really. I mean, yeah. you know, it's a huge amount of cost. And for for what sort of benefit? Well, you don't really know until it's out, do you? So Exactly, exactly. Exactly. So, I mean, I think it was a better, you know, a better way of thinking. I don't think we should change it that much, but yes, go with the technical side and all that stuff and what's going on. But at the same time, I think, uh, you know, um, if everyone sort of uh, who's a musician realizes that really they hold the key, really. Yeah. <laughs> they yeah. hold the key to choosing what they do. Absolutely. Format wise or with their career. Or you go down the same path and get, you know, hurled a lot with everyone else and uh, you kind of get, you don't get the most out of your product, really. Mm. But there is going to be coming up. There's, there is going to be an album, and it's going to have most hits on it, really. Wonderful. So you're going to you're going to know all the songs, really. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, that, you know the ones that we've had so far are absolutely fabulous. You know we're, we're loving oh, those, brilliant. and they're they're getting great. Uh, you know reception. Anna was said to me very excitedly. You know I've had some more um, tracks from Glenn Goldsmith and. I, I, I love them all," she said. So Aww. they're go they're going in the rotation. I said, like, "Okay, fair enough." <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's brilliant! That's brilliant. Well, you know, there was a bit of a lull, you know, a little bit of a gap between those uh, those records. I did all that pop stuff, you know, the Peter Andre and all that stuff. Yes. And uh, you know, worked with a lot of other artists, and um, I wasn't really recording that much. I was doing like the um, you know vocal coaching, the lyrics, the melody, a lot of writing, harmonies, yeah. and things like that. Mm. Yeah. Um, but I'd be sitting behind the desk thinking, oh, God, well, no, what about me? <laughs> I need to get out there, you know. Um, so I, I gave myself a little bit of a gap, built a studio and done some other stuff. And, and um, I bumped into, um, I started doing shows again. And I bumped into Toby years later. From wow. the, yeah, years later. And he said, Glenn, what, were, what are you doing? I said, oh, I don't know, really. You know, I'm just having a bit of a bit of a, a lull really he says let's get back in the studio and get some stuff going come on let's go back to the old days and i didn't know really there was a soul scene and i'm not going to lie to you but i didn't i thought the whole soul scene had kind of died out and there was all this hip-hop stuff and uh you know british mm. young talent so i thought there was no place for me really no so was, um, so was he strong. said no glenn yeah. there's, there's, there's but you've got there's a whole scene out there mm. and he explained to me that there's a whole scene out there and i started to um, man, when we did jamming in the place, we went in the studio and we did jamming in the place. I was really shocked how how it was received. It was really received really well. It was like a tester, really. Well, and um, um, you did that in 2011, and I picked yeah, up the yeah. uh, CD with that on um, in in January of 2012 at the Blackpool Weekender. So ah, um, oh, there you go. Yeah, so there you go. Yeah, you know, that's that's the scene that the, the CD had gone into because, of course, it's sitting there in the merchandise rooms at the Weekender, and I've gone through yeah. and flicked through and thought, "Oh, yeah, I left that." You know, and uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, and, and there's your tune, and that that's yeah. our first introduction there you go. to there, it. There you go. You're you're you know, I'm aiming at people like yourself, DJs who love soul music. You know, mm. and I, I I didn't know there was that scene out there. You know, I thought that everyone had to sort of like start following the format that was going on now. But obviously, you know, you you guys are a bit like me. You know, we're rebellious. We want it. <laughs> we want our soul music. We want to keep it going. You know what I mean? So um, yeah, and then no, I did a couple of uh, festivals and I did a um, summer solsters, which was huge. You know, there's this packed every summer. Love solsters. Um, it's a yeah, great. It's a great. I headlined gig. it last yeah. year. Yes. And um, it was about I don't know about 
60, 60,000, 30, 30, 30 upwards, 30,000. When it started, then it just gradually graduated through the day. That's 70,000 people set standing in a field, you know. Mm, yeah. So um, I was like, yeah, that's brilliant. Yep, we, well, we were there with you uh, last year um, and this year and uh, and for quite a few years, actually. But the Solstice is uh, a great event, love it. And, um, you know, it, uh, it it's just... Uh, a wonderful day out. Um, oh, isn't you know, it? Yeah, just to get involved. Especially when the weather's right. Well, yeah, <laughs> this year right. it was a little bit rainy, but I think everybody still had a good time. It was, you know, it was a little bit yeah. wet. But um, the year before, the year you did it, was absolutely glorious that day. It was, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 It, was. Oh, it was a beautiful Perfect day. day. Mm. Yeah, what, what, a, what, a great, what a great day. I mean, that one uh, will, will stick in my mind for, forever as a, as a oh, fantastic oh. Day of soul. <laughs> Wonderful. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Mm. Exactly. But it works, you know. I think those things work. And uh, I'm glad that DJ sort of came up with their ideas and just throwing out there and had this festival going and, mm. you know, and and just brought everybody back together. You know, we're, we're still kind of young in our in ourselves. You know, we're, we're young at heart. We still love our music. And uh, we like it properly done. <laughs> yeah, well, age is just a number after all. And, yeah, we do like it properly done for sure. Exactly. So talking about large crowds, uh, do you remember, Glenn, the, the first time you ever sort of did a big public performance, you know, once things sort of got underway? Do you remember? Do you remember that at all? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, nervous I was. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because I was used to having a band behind me and things like that, you know, so you kind of like cower to the band if you you know get a bit shaky mm. um but when you're on your own you're just thrown out there i mean my very first pa it was it wasn't a live show it was a pa mm. i hardly sang the songs because the crowd knew the, knew all the words or they were either screaming i couldn't hear myself um i had jackets torn off me wow. <laughs> <laughs> girls would rip me to pieces you know and bodyguards would like be taking me back out the back door for safety you know <laughs> so some of the gigs you know they turn up they pay quite a bit of money like 25 quid or something for it for and it'd be packed it'd be like uh i don't know about ten thousand people turn up and be queues outside well wow. and it'd be girls at the front and they're not really oh, i don't know i don't know if they're interested in the music but you know i ended up with like a, a jacket i wasn't supposed to wear to a pa and uh i was i was meant to rca bought it for me for about three grand and said, wear that on the video, the next video. Don't don't wear it anywhere else, but I sneaked it out anyway. And, uh, well, I came back with no arms. <laughs> <laughs> they, they just tore me to pieces. It was quite dangerous, really. But the, the guy said to me, oh, my God, it's like having the Beatles here. He said, you know, I'm going to book you again. It's like having the Beatles. But um, at that time, 87, 88, going up to 89, I remember, remember Record Mirror. Do you remember Record Mirror? Mm, yes, yeah. <laughs> they, had, um, they took they one on the road with me because I kept doing these PAs. They wondered, what, what, why would you be doing these PAs? But I found that it really helped to sort of uh, be in touch with the crowd. So I'd do probably like, oh, I don't know, every day I was working and I'd do three clubs, sometimes nine clubs, where you're doing two songs or three songs or four songs, you know, it doesn't matter, well. just to get the crowd going and uh, get the public on your side. And um, they followed me for like a, a whole month and didn't realize how hard it really was. It's really hard work. Mm. And uh, they, re they, they then put me down as one of the hardest working people in the music business. Wow. I, think I'm in, I think I'm in the Guinness Book of Records at that time for have, doing the most shows ever. Wow. You know? That's so, brilliant. yeah. That's brilliant. Mm. Well, every day's an education, Glenn. I've, I've learnt more today. That's fantastic. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it went on. I mean, there's lots more I could tell you. You know, I, um, they, RCA sent me to uh, America mm. and uh, ended up bumping into MC Hammer. <laughs> yes, yeah. Do you remember MC Hammer? I do, yeah. Because yeah, he appeared on with... one of your videos or something. You recorded something with yeah. him? Yeah. Yeah, I did a track called um, uh, You Got Me Dancing, which That's was recorded it. in demo over here. Mm. Um, with a guy called Jay Logan, a producer called Jay, Jay Logan, has worked with um, Sherelle and uh, Bobby Brown and other people like that. Mm. And uh, RCA liked it so much and then said, right, we're sending it to America on the second album. I went over there and we were like in the studio. MC Hammer was in another studio and I could hear the track, you, you know, um, his famous track. You, you can't, can't touch, touch this. this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, it sounded, I'm not going to lie to you, it sounded like a mess, really. I'm not going to, it sounded like <laughs> pots and pans going on and a lot of noise and char shouting going on. I thought, oh, that's disturbing. Anyway, um, they knew each other and uh, Jay introduced me to him. 
he came into our studio and sat there listening to You Got Me Dancing. And he said, I love this track. Can I rap on this track? So I said, well, seeing that you're a big artist, why not? <laughs> you know, uh, you've yeah. got all the credibility, why not? And his, his thing was, you know, because I was like the latest artist um, commercially, he thought, well, I could break him over here. Wow. So it was kind That's of a good. political move, but at the same time, a musical move. I'm not really into rap, but um, from a logistics point of view, I think it kind of was a good idea. Um, and, uh, yeah, it went down quite well in America, but I don't think England really liked it that much. It didn't see me as, uh, you know, mixing with rap, really. So, mm. you know, it kind of, like, sort of uh, stagnated at a certain point, you know. Um, but... It's good to have that. I'm good to, I'm glad, glad I did it because I've got it now on my CV. <laughs> well, there you go, on your musical yeah. CV. And that's always a good thing, isn't it? Yeah. It's always a good thing. So who, who were you listening to when you, you were younger? Who were, the, who were your sort of musical idols as you grew up? Oh, lots of people. I loved Shalimar. In fact, I did a sh my very first show before I ever got signed. I was with the band Push and we did Shalimar. And uh, I stood behind them while they were performing. Yes. And uh, they were amazing, just amazing. They sound like the record, exactly like yeah. the record live. Mm. Wonderful. And uh, I thought, right, that's it. We've got to sound like the record live when we do our stuff, you know. <laughs> um, but, yeah, Shalimar was one. Um, a, lot of the, a lot of the artists that won that label as well. Uh, Michael, obviously, and the Jackson Fires, the early Michael. I would say early oh, yeah. Michael. I didn't, write, I didn't really like a lot of the late stuff. I couldn't get my head around it. Mm. Um, who else? Uh, George Benson. Yeah. Uh, Donny Hathaway. Yeah. I love Donny Hathaway. I love his voice. Stevie Wonder. Yeah. Um, you know, and the list goes on, really. I mean, I've got, you know, I've got, I could go on, really. You know, there's quite a few, really, that I'd really, really got my head around. There was a, a lot of artists that I really liked, and a lot of female artists as well, Chak Khan and Rufus. Yes, yeah. Um, yeah, I just like that kind of like live element to it, really, when they're recorded, um, which uh, we're more sort of trying to sort of get to now. You know, Sunshine was kind of done live in the studio. Yeah. <clears throat> and we just kind of like produced, they took away from the studio and produced some other elements to it, so it became a bit more modern, you know. So we got the old and the new. Uh, and the next single after this single is completely live. Um, we've got two versions, one that's done not live, but then we've got another one that's done by Soul Talk. Yeah. Um, wow. the, the production team. So they've done a, a remix of it and uh, it's managed to go, I managed to get a deal with it, with um, Expansions. So Expansions is going to put it out on vinyl and nice. uh, get it out on 7 vinyl and 12 inch vinyl. And um, I'll, I'll also put it out in, um, as a 7 as well and a 12 and the original version. So there's quite a bit next month, well, this month coming really. So oh, I'm totally looking forward to that, but you know, at the same time, I'm trying to get me a down with this one, I'm trying to get <laughs> trying to get this one in the Soul UK chart. <laughs> yeah, well, it should be there for sure. I mean, absolutely. Um, yeah. And um, I'm just, you know, I just love the tune, and it was, oh. you know, it's been recorded a week with us, and you know, it's it's just just oh. a wonderful a wonderful tune, you know, or, or uh, you know. Um, it's just got everything, well, you know. It's, it's got that beginning, middle, and end that you expect from a song, yeah. if you know what I mean. Well, my, the guy that I did it with, his name's um, uh, Carlos Edwards. Um, mm -hmm. I worked with his brother for a very long time on on and off. We did a couple of stuff with Misha Paris and things like that. Mm -hmm. And um, his brother, he introduced me to his brother, and uh, went in the studio, and uh, we had like fake horns on it and everything at the time in the demo. Yeah. And uh, we sat down. We thought, no, we don't want fake horns. We bring bring in a, a team of people like to play horns you know yeah you know so we had trombone uh sax and uh no just complete brass so we had three people playing and we just tracked it up so it sounds a bit like earth wind and fire wonderful um, oh, yeah. and then we got the Isn't guitar it? live guitar a bit of synth but some live bass as well and uh unfortunately programmed drums but we tried to make it as good as a uh, like played live like it's almost like played live so you've got all the feels in there as well so, um, yeah, it's a bit of a tricky one, but it, mm. I, lo I love a challenge anyway. And, you know, it, it just worked. We were like, oh, it works. It <laughs> we need to get, we need work. get this out now. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. I had yeah, a bit of a right. cough lately, so I don't to clear Same here. <laughs> <laughs> well, it just, in the air. <laughs> it just worked, didn't it? I mean, it, it's, you know, it's just a, a fabulous tune. And, you know, and don't delay putting it in the charts, whatever you do. So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, it's one of those things. I mean, it's just a matter of uh, 
really just uh, pumping it away, really, and getting it to the right people. With you know, um, I'm, mm. I'm doing it myself with um, my manager, so we're we're both working on it together, and uh, it's my label, but <clears throat> she's come on board. I've known her for years, and Jessie that you've just spoken about. Yes, I've known yeah. her for years. She's uh, she started off as a, an agent, but um, she's got a good head on her, and we just got together and we're just marketing this really in the right way and just aiming it. Yeah. We, who we who we know lo- loves it, you know. Avoid trying to get it, you know, to the people that don't love it, you know, which mm. is what commercial stations do or the commercial um, labels would do. We just throw it out there, see who see out if it sticks or not. But we kind of know who who to get it to really, mm. and um, it's getting it to our fans, our, our sort of age group. But also, there's some young people getting into soul music really now. They're Definitely. getting fed up with all this. Yeah, they're getting fed up with all the same old thing, you know. So. I'm finding um, on Facebook, I'm getting young people, like 23, 24, you know, great followers. And um, they're sticking with it as well. They're not, like, jumping off it. They're sticking with me, you know. So since 2011, there's all these uh, young people on my Facebook. Um, and they're sort of, you know, they're sticking with it. They're waiting yeah. for the next one. You I've, know, I've, seen good. That, I've seen that on the the soul scene and the northern soul scene, actually, where, you know, the, some of the gigs there are younger people turning up to, you know, because yeah. they are fed up with the same old, same old, that, that, that's, you know, that they're presented with every club they go to. So yeah. they're, they're starting to turn up at some of the sort of more specialist music events. You exactly. Know. Um, I think they get disappointed because what's happening is a lot of these artists go on with a... Uh, a really well programmed track and can't sing it, mm. you know, because it's, you know, that when you're programming stuff, it's, uh, you know, you get your four bars, for instance, like one, two, three, four, and mm. it's perfectly programmed. You don't get the kind of lazy swing on a drum, which uh, a human feel would be. You That's know? right. So you don't get that thing in between, that swing vocally. So you can't really, you have to, it's hard to sing to a, a programmed kind of a, uh, production really and I've, I've had a go I've done a few things like that and it's, it's hard so mm. when, I, when I'm programming now if I'm doing any programming now I, sl- I, I sort of put it in live yes you know I play the drums in live I don't I don't, I don't quantize it mm. I would leave it with that feel and yeah. then uh, work on it work on the drums as much as possible so it sounds almost live it's got that slightly off you know slightly off but it's still in time well, so a human, a, human being, a human being can dance to it or a human being can feel it you know, well, I, I always remember, you know, sort of, and I, and I still do, you know, mixing with um, sort of acoustic music uh, where drummers yeah. don't really keep time is a big, is totally different to mixing, say, house music. You know, it's um, oh yeah, I was you gonna, know, I was going to go there just now with house music. I can't find it really. I mean, I'm, I do like some of it. But I'm not in love, in love with it. I don't buy house music, mm. but there's a lot of nice soul house at the moment, and um, they're kind of getting it right, but. I'll do a soul for house um, show on a Thursday my night. Yeah, yeah Thursday not night. My preference, but uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll have a listen. I'll, I'll, I'll check you. I'll check you. Check you on that. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a yeah, it's a good it's a good genre. The soulful house stuff I absolutely love. I mean, we do play a bit yeah. of deep and a bit of jack in as well, and we get quite a few house shows on the station, which are very popular. But um, yeah, you know, we are we are essentially, you know, uh, an all sort of uh, mobo genres and and so on. So, I think it's good, you know, because really at the same time, I was saying to my, um, there's another guy I'm working with who does house, and he keeps throwing me this stuff, and I'm, I'm going, no, I don't like that, I don't like that, it's a bit too Euro, it's a bit like this, and then he sent me a track the other day, and I really love it, but it was, I can't sing it in my natural voice, but I have to sing it in falsetto, and I heard it back, and I thought, mm, it sounds pretty good, actually, um, I might just throw out a house track and see what happens with this, you know, um, but then it's not the same market, I'm going to go, See if my my soul market would like it, but then again, throw it out to the European people as well, you know, or or go out to like Ibiza and places like that with this type this type of music. Well, more so, and more um, uh, the soul sort of all dayers and so on, they, they they have soulful house sessions there. So if you ah. did do a soulful house remix of it, the chances are it would get played in yeah, one of well, those we, sessions. We, well, we're going to have to do that. We're going to have to do like those mixes, but also with expansions, um, they offered me a situation for next year to do what dance four on the floor housey type soul album really so um, apart from just my album which i'm doing this style with mm. i'm going to go and do this uh, experiment with this as well which i think would be a bit of a challenge and see if it works but i'm going to try and keep it almost live you know so well, we'll throw it my way guitar on it. yeah i will definitely <laughs> check it my way we'll get it out there on, the, on new grooving that'll be fantastic oh i will definitely <laughs> 
Oh, brilliant. Wonderful. Yeah, we'll definitely get behind that and everything that comes out. I mean, these the, the tracks that um, that we've been playing, I, I mean, Jamming in the Place uh, is a fabulous tune. Dreaming, a fabulous tune. You know, I, I just love... Uh, Old and new, they they just yeah. they just got that Glenn Goldsmithness about them. Yeah, you know? <laughs> well, it's funny when Dreaming came out, everyone was saying there's no one like, there's nothing like this out there. Um, this is amazing, you know. No, no one's doing this type of stuff. And I was thinking, really, you know, because you're the artist, you're the one that make it. It's like you making a cake, and everyone's going, wow, you know. And you think, well, I just made that. I put so much into that. Um, well, I'm glad you like it, but um, wow, you know, enjoy it. Do you know what I mean? I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> um, so I still, even years later, twenty odd years later, I mean, I'm talking about a good, nearly thirty years now. Yeah, um, wow. it's still sort of. Uh, I don't know. When people talk about dreaming, and I won't cry. I have to listen to it again to hear what people hear about it, you know, or loved about it. Um, so I whack it on every every now and again. I think, oh yeah, it was that bass line. Oh yeah, mm. it's got that string line. Oh yeah, it's got a good melody. You know, because you can't. You tend to sort of forget. You know, because you're the one that made it. You know, you, you don't know what you forget what recipe you put in there. Mm. You know what I mean? Well, I'd drop it on the breakfast show, and everybody loves it. You know, you know, dreaming. Oh, you know, or I won't cry, or, or any any of those tunes. And um, yeah, and then uh, you know, like today, I said, I'm I, I, so at ease. It was the first time I played that one actually today. Um, that went out um, during the breakfast yeah. show uh, earlier. So. Uh, you know, Aww. very, very, uh, very, very excited about the new tunes and, and what's going on with them. So uh, that's that's all good stuff. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's the history, really, you know what I mean? <laughs> well, you know, I, 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 love, I just I just love chatting, Glenn, to be honest. And, you know, when I when I find someone like you that I've got so much musically sort of in common with and... It, it's just yeah. it's just lovely, and I, I realise now. I'm looking here, and I'm thinking, "Wow, we have, we've been talking for forty minutes." And <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. Hopefully... Well, we're all normal, really. At the end of the day, we're all normal. There's nothing, you know. You're doing. You're you're a DJ, and you're you've got the same passion, really. I was saying the other day that I'd love to play music, be a DJ, because it comes from the same place. Mm. You know that that passion for just having music. It just comes from the same place. So. Um, you know, that's why I'm connecting with a lot of DJs, really. I'm, I've always been a DJ boy, mm. you know. I've always, like, made connections with DJs, and uh, I listen to them a lot, you know. <clears throat> I'm, I, you know, I don't sort of turn down advice. So if one of them turns around and says, oh, Glenn, you know, that one there, mm, uh, you, I think you should revocal that or whatever, mm. I'll listen to them because they know what they're playing. <clears throat> they know what they're feeling. Yeah. If they can't feel it, they're not going to play it, you know. So, um, well, if you I ever want to come into SFR and spin a few tunes, then that would be absolutely yeah, no yeah, problem definitely. whatsoever. That'd definitely. Cool. I was down there last weekend doing a, um, a session with someone else, doing an interview, actually, mm. and they kept me on for another two hours playing tunes, you know, uh, and uh, I was saying, no, play this tune, play that tune, play this tune, and it was real fun, you know? Yeah, it will. Sounds like, yeah. sounds like something that we uh, we can set up for the future. That would be wonderful. Oh, that would be brilliant. That would yeah. be brilliant. Yes. yes, wonderful. And if you want to point our listeners at your social media and, um, and and your fans, so that they can come and sort of engage with you more in sort of Facebook and Twitter and, and places like that, and your website because you've got you've got a great website. Um, yeah. T- t- tell the listeners all about those places so they can sort of engage with you more. Oh yeah, I mean um, yeah, we just fixed it up last year actually. It, was, it disappeared for a bit. So yeah, my website is uh, com. Yeah. So if you want to get on there, that'd be brilliant. And uh, uh, my, uh, I'm on Twitter and I'm on Facebook as well. Yeah, I've got two Facebooks actually, so you can't, you can find me. It's dead easy. Just, just put Glenn Goldsmith in a search, and they'll arrive. Yeah, and I'm yeah, there. Yeah, 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 fantastic. That's brilliant. And um, you know, we we really looking forward to your new projects, all of them. Um, oh. And you know, the imminent album. Um, so glad you're working with Expansions. So yeah. glad you're producing wonderful music and, and oh, allowing you. us to have it and allowing our listeners to enjoy it. And, you know, um, we, we we will obviously be behind you all the way with oh, the promotion you. of all of that because that's, oh, that's what we brilliant. do. You know? That's brilliant. No, well, I'm enjoying it and I'm enjoying um, you guys listening to it and uh, the feedback's pretty good, you know, and it's from, especially from you guys, you know, which is important really. So, like I said, you wouldn't play anything that's not that's not good, you know. So I'm glad that you're playing it. <laughs> this 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 is top quality soul, Glenn. Absolutely love it, you know. Brilliant. Um, 
and so to, to get an instantaneous reaction through something like Twitter over one song, you know, yeah. it means it stands out. It, 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 yeah, it was working. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because people don't, you know, people listen, but they don't bother to write unless something really bites them, you know? That's right, that's right, that's right. You know, if yeah, someone can be bothered to type, that then yeah. something's got them, you know? Exactly. Well, some mm. tracks, you know, um, you, you know, I'll go online and be a good artist or something, and uh, I'll go online and I'll hear it, and it take me like a couple of times to get my head around it. I'm a bit biased because I like the artist, but then I have to be honest, it might not be working for me, you know, so mm. I have to jump off it, you know, but this, you know, I, I tend, really what I'm trying to do is write songs that I can sing along to, you know, and, uh, I, you know, and uh, my niece can sing along to me, my mum can sing along to it, it's just something that, it's, it has to be hooky, it has to be hooky all the way through, and musically, it has to be a little clever, you know. Mm. So um, it grabs uh, the punter's ears, and I, I want to see them dance. <laughs> I want to see people enjoy themselves to it, really. Wonderful. Well, that's, yeah. that's the name of the game, isn't it? If people exactly. can listen and dance, I mean, that's that's got to be the bottom line, isn't it? And uh, I, I mean, I, I, I certainly wouldn't have any problems taking your tunes out on the road when oh. I go you know, to all dayers and play at those and things like that. So, oh, brilliant. You know, it's just it's just fantastic. And, oh, uh, brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah, Absolutely brilliant, and and of course, um, we we'll, you know we'll, we'll interact with you on on Facebook and Twitter, and just uh, oh, make yeah. sure we all we all know what's sort of going on, really. And uh, exactly, well, I'm always on there. You can always talk to me as well. I'm you know I'm not one of these people that you can't talk to, so you can get on there, tell me what you think. You know, can have even have a normal conversation about your day. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't mind. <laughs> yeah, well, just you know, yeah, if no ever you want to do the same, you know, just come in and direct message me. Um, even if I'm on air, I'll, I'll always yeah, react to definitely. that. And uh, you know, if when when your new stuff comes out, we'd love to have a look at it and have a listen to it and uh, yeah, and get behind it because oh, lovely, yeah. Well, lovely. Thanks for the support. Brilliant. No, never a problem, Glenn. If there's anything else you want to say to anyone that, uh, or, or, or to your fans and, and people that love your music out there that I haven't asked you and you feel you should say, then please feel free to well, just. Do well, that. I just want to say thank you know thanks thanks for just sticking with me you know and uh, you know there was a big gap between you probably thought I. Uh, you know, uh, left the country or something, which a lot of people <laughs> said, well, I didn't know you were still about. Um, no, I was still here. I was still always in the music business. And, uh, but um, I, I'm doing it now for you guys, you know, really, you know, and uh, every time I'm writing a song, I think of you guys. I think, oh, these guys would love it. Oh, those people would love it. I can imagine them dancing to it. I can imagine them singing to it. So I'm doing it for you guys. And uh, um, I just hope you will stick with me even more, you know, and uh, enjoy Definitely. it. Just really enjoy yourselves, you know. Definitely, absolutely fantastic. Brilliant. Have a have a absolutely wonderful day, and thank you for sharing so much time with us. And hopefully, it won't be too long before we no chat problem. again. Really looking forward to your new releases, and maybe we can talk again then when the album comes yeah. out. Yeah, and uh, no problem. Yeah, that's brilliant, Glenn. With thank you for DJ your time. Gloss. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> nice name. Yeah. Right, DJ Gloss and Glenn Goldsmith. Mm. Well, it sounds, <laughs> sounds all right, doesn't it? Yeah, so, so it all sounds nice very one. shiny, doesn't it? <laughs> Yeah, they're all shiny. <laughs> Brilliant. Thanks very much anyway. And you too. You take care and have an absolutely Brilliant. wonderful day. And we'll speak soon, Glenn. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers now. Take care. Bye-bye. All right, mate. Bye. Bye. Bye.